Hey everyone, Bailey Burns here with another STEM Sunday. Thank you for joining me. I have a lot to talk about this time, so let's just dive in. First, let's talk about space, um, obviously. I have a huge announcement. I'm very excited to share this. Um, someone near and dear to my heart is going to space. Her name is Dr. Cyan Proctor, and she was just selected for Inspiration4, which is basically a partnership with a guy with a lot of money, and St. Jude's to fly with SpaceX on Crew Dragon to go go to space and he basically brought on people who deserved it not your everyday like not your typical astronaut not the people who have lots of money and can send themselves these are everyday people and that's why cyan she's an everyday person i'm so proud of her i'm so excited for her she was selected to go on this mission um she has really encouraged me to do things outside of my comfort zone such as becoming a rubik's cube ambassador and um she really encompasses this spirit of fun adventure go make life an adventure and so you know this is just the adventure of a lifetime so i'm glad she's on it i had to give her that shout out um and i think it's really proving that yeah this this solving a rubik's cube in space this is happening guys this we have the potential to do this within the next few years so that's really exciting what other space news do we have going on um there's a lot like I mentioned last time, um, Mars, on Mars, we had Perseverance Touchdown, doing some really cool science there. And the big announcement there is that Ingenuity, which is the little helicopter that, that f flew and landed with like a little contraption kind of hitched a ride with uh, Perseverance, Ingenuity is officially unfolding. So they basically folded it up into this tiny little compartment and now it's unfolding like origami all crazy like it's taking a long time to unfold because that's how robotics on a faraway planet works um so it started its unfolding process it's going to take its first flight now this is gonna be the first time we see like a motorized um helicopter type thing fly in another world and this is a big deal because we don't know about the atmosphere we don't know about like how the gyroscope's gonna work we don't know how this all these things are gonna work and to be able to fly on another planet could really help us with transportation in the future. Um, you don't have to drive everywhere. You don't have to get stuck up in all that moon dust and that Martian dust. So um, this is another really big moment for space. But let's talk about Rubik's Cubes, right? Um, okay, so this is the coolest thing. This month, April, is the Mathematics Awareness Month, Mathematics and Statistics. So this is a big deal. I'm a woman in STEM. I do engineering things. I use math all the time. So this is really exciting for me. Um, and I really wanted to share this because, I mean, the Rubik's Cube is all about math, right? We talked about algorithms a few months ago. We talked about the pattern recognition, all these different things that really help um, when learning about STEM and math. So this is a big deal for Rubik's. Let's, let's give you some quick facts real quick. Um, there are actually 43 quintillion ways to have the Rubik's Cube, different orientations, you know, solves is obviously the one that most people go for, but there's a bunch of other dif different ways, and there's actually 43 quintillion different ways to set up your Rubik's Cube. Um, that means even the best speed cubers who have solved the cube hundreds of times every day have probably not had their cube in every possible orientation that it could be in. Um, just to give you guys some other kind of facts there, there are 125 billion galaxies um, in our universe that we know of. So we just said 125 billion. That blows my mind. That's a lot of galaxies. That's a really big universe, right? The Rubik's Cube is at 43 quintillion. Do you guys know how many extra zeros are on top of that? Like, like a lot. Like, maybe a couple other, like, decimal point moves. I'd have to do the math. I think, like, six or so. It's crazy. So, um, that should give you a good appreciation for how many different orientations there are on the Rubik's Cube. Okay, so then obviously I was really excited about this topic of Rubik's Cubes and math and STEM and all this other stuff. So I did some more research and I found a paper written by MIT, yeah, MIT, about how to solve a Rubik's Cube using math. And it was fascinating. It was super cool. And I recognized some of the words in there. <laughs> I thought I thought this was going to be awesome. I thought I was going to read this paper, understand it, be able to communicate it all to you. And I don't think I can. Uh, it was it was really difficult to read. There were some concepts that I could follow. And, and the cool thing they were talking about is like grouping things together, um, which I thought was really interesting. But I did not get it to the point where I could probably explain it to you. And I have a lot of other papers to read for school right now. So we'll put that one on hold. And if I ever understand it, I'll be sure to explain it to you. Um, but this brings up another really cool topic that I wanted to talk about of you know, being bad at math. Um, I am not good at math. I hope you guys understand this. 
I'm pretty sure from geometry all the way up to differential equations in college, I got a C. Um, B or C, somewhere in that area, but I definitely got a lot of C's in math. And um, I'm an engineer. Um, I can solve a Rubik's Cube. Um, maybe one day I'll go to space. And for all you students out there that are not doing that well in math, that means nothing, okay? You can still go on to do crazy cool things in STEM and science and even math. Um, the biggest thing I like to point out is that I always started getting the math concepts the second time around. So after I had taken the class, after I'd gotten my C and, and moved on to the next class and things from that class were tying back to the first one, that's when the things started clicking and everything started melding and like I understood that first class. And if I could just go back and take the tests, I would do much better. Um, so I, I just don't want people to think, oh, I'm bad at math as a reason to not become whatever you want. It's nothing to stop you. You will get there eventually. It's like a muscle. You have to kind of use it, shake off the dust and, and flex that brain muscle of math. But it's definitely something achievable by everyone. So that's my point for this entire month. Math is not scary. It's not hard. It's just different. And it's really exciting to be part of this movement to make math approachable, just like space, just like Rubik's Cube. It's totally approachable. You can do it. And if it doesn't make sense the first time, that doesn't mean you can't go on to do the things you don't, you want to do. So that's my message to you for this lovely STEM Sunday. I think we covered a lot of cool things, including inspiration for with my friend, Dr. Proctor. Um, we also talked about ingenuity. So that's happening. We'll probably talk about that again on the next STEM Sunday, spoiler alert. And um, then we talked about math. This is a big month for math. This is exciting. We get to hype up math. And even though it's hard for people, I think it's a really good thing to talk about. So with that, I'll see you guys next month. Bye.